Helldivers 2 success continues but still with issues, we discuss a new Wolverine trailer leak, Stellar Blade will have 3 rendering modes, and next gen consoles may have higher prices. All that and more in today's PlayStation news, let's get to them. Helldivers 2 success continues on Steam as it reaches a new milestone over a tough weekend for Arrowhead and the servers for the game. As of recording, the game has passed 410,000 concurrent users on Steam, and to put it into perspective, that is more players than every single PlayStation PC port has had during its peak combined, and that's despite launching simultaneously on PS5. It has also been in the all-time peak of big games such as Grand Theft Auto V, Monster Hunter World, Starfield, Counter-Strike, Destiny 2, Skyrim, and Halo Infinite multiplayer, among others. The game is so successful that even Xbox fans have started an online petition for Sony to bring the game to their platform, following Phil Spencer's comments that he wasn't exactly sure which helps in the industry by Helldivers 2 not being on Xbox. The petition over at Change.org has reached over 35,000 signatures as of recording. However, this past weekend was one of the toughest for Arrowhead Studios, as the game was marked with logging issues as server capacity was not able to keep up with demand. According to director Johan Pilested on Twitter, the game has had a total of 500,000 players between PS5 and PC at one point, and that's the max cap for the server as anything beyond that brings their systems down. According to the studio, they had to cap their server's capacity to around 450,000 users to further improve stability while they work with partners to raise the ceiling, and anyone with progression issues is told to restart the game to sync backup. The game has already been facing issues like this since launch, and the extra XP and free PlayStation Plus weekend may have only made things worse, with players not being able to enjoy either bonus. The frustration around the game's issues has been so bad that it has led some users to spam the official Discord for the game, which has been on lockdown since last Wednesday. As of recording, they have pushed update 1.09 to resolve more crash issues and bring stability improvements, so hopefully the game does better this week. Have you been able to play Helldivers 2? Let us know in the comments. Now let's talk about Marvel's and Insomniac Wolverine as a new trailer has been dug up from the data that was leaked last December. I won't be showing any of the trailer here, but we can go over the details, and the source is in the description. There are no story spoilers, but there could be spoilers related to the game's mechanics, so this is your last chance to skip to the next section of the news with the chapters in the description. The trailer opens with a frozen wilderness, later switching to a rainforest, and guards are looking for someone. Then in the distance and at the top of a tree you can see Wolverine sporting his brown and yellow classic suit, his claws made of bone instead of adamantium. Wolverine activates his sense of smell, which is like Batman Arkham's Predator mode, where you can see enemies and if they are scared. Logan then jumps into the enemy with claws going through his skull. After that Wolverine looks at some footprints and the smell points out the next way to go. The game switches to a stealth area where you hide in the bushes to then surprise enemies and kill them. It goes into full combat very similar to a God of War, where you can dismember enemies, use some finishers that send them flying, or jump from tree to tree and launch into enemies. After that we're on the bar section from the teaser trailer, which I believe is Madripoor. Here we can see Logan with the same t-shirt and cowboy hat as in the teaser. Then there's fighting against the hand, showcasing the visceral combat and how he slashes and impales enemies, dropping them against the furniture, with another character later appearing with a shotgun to help Logan. The battle against the hand is taken outside where there's a huge enemy, and here we can see Logan slicing and dicing more enemies, throwing them against the environment reminiscent of Uncharted Pike. It ends with Logan taking out the big enemy with claws going through his face. It's a trailer that we probably won't ever see as it was intended for an internal meeting, where they showed the game took inspiration from games such as God of War, Uncharted, Assassin's Creed and more, but I can't wait until they officially can show more about it. Are you looking forward to Wolverine? Share with us in the comments. Now a game that you can play really soon, this April in fact, is the Stellar Blade, and now we have the details on the different rendering modes it will include. This was part of an interview from German site Play3, with Chief Tufts game director Hong Tae Kim and technical director Dong Gi Lee, translated by Genki and reported by Push Square. According to them, the game will have three modes including a 60fps performance option, a resolution mode prioritizing 4K, and a balanced mode striking a middle ground between the two. There are no specifics on that balanced mode, but maybe it's something similar to what we saw in Horizon Forbidden West, 
where Guerrilla patched a new balanced graphics mode that allowed for more detail with 40 FPS. We likely won't have to wait too long as the game comes out really soon for PS5. What's your hype level for Stellar Blade? Let us know in the comments. Something we still have to wait a bit for is the next PlayStation console generation, and it seems we could pay a premium whenever it starts. Trusted insider Kepler L2 has predicted that cost savings from dice shrinks may no longer be feasible, potentially leading to higher console prices or limited performance improvements from both Sony and Microsoft. This follows a significant insight from Sony's Q3 result as per Genki on Twitter that Sony CEO Hiroki Totoki said it is harder to grow profits on the PS5 as the generation continues due to parts becoming more expensive as the life cycle goes on in comparison with previous generations when it was the opposite. We still have to wait about 3 or 4 more years for that, but it also makes you wonder if the rumored PS5 Pro may launch with similar constraints. While Microsoft said in the recent business meeting they are preparing their largest technical leap in console performance. How much do you think Sony would price future hardware? Place your bets in the comments. Moving on in the previous episode, we talked about the 27th DICE Awards, where Spider Man 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 were the big winners. Baldur's Gate 3 ended up as Game of the Year, and as part of their acceptance speech, Michael Dow's director of publishing at Lion Studios highlighted the industry's struggle to recognize the value of game developers, especially with all the layoffs over the past year. This is a really human industry, and we're really bad sometimes at showing that, showing developers what they're worth and showing the players at home that we care about them. He emphasized the importance of acknowledging developers' worth and encouraged those affected by layoffs to preserve against the adversity. I want you all to know that you are talented and that you matter and that you are the future of this industry. Lion Studios production head David Walgrave also talked about how their company's success is based on aligning with players' desires and developers' creative visions, being independent of shareholders or the trend of live services. We ask you to pay one price only for the game and that's it. You can own it for the rest of your life. We, we don't have shareholders, but we also don't think about them. On the long run, building a community, building a player base, building games that are actually fun is going to make you the most money. That's it. It was a strong message that puts in evidence many companies that only care about the bottom line, and while the games industry is ultimately a business, there are better ways to create titles that will generate money without giving up on the creative aspect. What do you think about Lions Studios' speech at the DICE Awards? Voice your opinion in the comments. Next, there are still rumblings about Xbox's strategic change announced last week that will see four games debuting on other platforms including PS5 and Switch. The Verge has obtained a memo sent from Phil Spencer to employees before the business meeting last Thursday where he outlines their future strategy. Their main goal is a future where players have a unified experience across devices, a future where players can easily discover a vast array of games with a diverse spectrum of business models, a future where more creators are empowered to realize their creative vision, reach a global audience, unite their communities and succeed commercially, a future where every screen is an Xbox. Spencer noted that big games like Indiana Jones and Starfield won't be on other platforms, but this memo and the interview with The Verge make Microsoft look like they are on a wait and see approach and that more games could indeed follow. Do you believe Microsoft will end up publishing more than 4 games on other platforms? Let us know in the comments. Now let's go for a round of quickfire gaming news. Sony's value reportedly plummeted by $10 billion following its Q3 financial report, where they cut the PS5 sales forecast from 25 to 21 million units. After that, their shares dropped by 8.4%, and now a new report from CNBC determined the Japanese company has lost around $10 billion from its valuation. Analyst Atul Goyal said this is more due to the disappointing 6% operating margin of the gaming division, down from 12 to 13%, rather than the shipment forecast. The margin should have been rising due to the increase in digital game sales and PS Plus, with margins of up to 20 and 50% respectively. New Until Dawn remake gameplay screenshots have leaked online, not showing them here, but you can see them with the links in the description. They don't reveal a whole lot either but offer a glimpse of the game's third-person perspective, plus reveal a new playable segment and possible death for one of the playable characters. 
The game is being remade with Unreal Engine 5 and they also promise it will feature a new score by horror composer Mark Corbin. Dragon's Dogma 2 is Capcom's first $70 game nearly 4 years into this generation, and despite being one of the latest publishers to adopt this pricing, they are not fully committed but it may not be their last game at that price. In an investor's call Q&A, they indicate a review of their pricing scale due to industry-wide development costs rising, but ultimately will take a thoughtful approach while asserting user feedback. Speaking of Dragon's Dogma 2, an update on Steam's backend hints at a possible demo coming soon. On Steam TV, you can spot a new free on demand package, usually associated with demos. So, anyone looking forward to try the game before its March 22nd release on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC may get a chance really soon. Bandai Namco may be happy with Tekken 8 passing 2 million copies sold, but the publisher has had their issues as they indicated that at least 5 in development games were cancelled due to revamped quality evaluation criteria as a result of rising development costs. The company's upcoming games pipeline includes the Elden Ring DLC, Little Nightmares 3, Sandland, the Dark Pictures Anthology Directive 8020, and Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. Sega Sapporo Studio established during the pandemic is currently helping with the publisher's upcoming AAA titles like Crazy Taxi. Studio head Takaya Segawa cited their involvement with Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, Hatsune Miku Colorful Stage, and the arcade Taxi Game. The article from Japan Times also reveals how the office offers a fulfilling work environment with shorter commutes and lower costs compared to Tokyo to attract talent. UK supermarket Asda is offering Immortals of Avian for just one pound, down from its previous five pound price as they seek to clear stock, only available in physical stores. Asda often discounts games to clear inventory, and now even more with the physical format in its last legs. But the news could also be a hit to developer team's morale after poor sales of the game at launch and the recent reveal that some employees thought the project was a huge mistake. Twitter user Kurakasi is known for accurate leaks, hints at an impending announcement for LEGO 2K Gold this March, with a release possibly tied to the UEFA Euro 2024 in June, with TT Games developing. The game has already leaked as it was listed on the PlayStation Store last November. The announcement in March could potentially also have 2K revealing their FIFA partnership to rival EA Sports FC games. American rapper Post Malone is teaming up with 2K and WWE as the executive producer for the WWE 2K24 soundtrack. The game celebrating 40 years of WrestleMania will feature tracks from Busta Rhymes, Speed, Rhymes, Turnstile, Colter Wall, and more. Post Malone will also be in the game as a DLC character, joining other non-WWE superstars such as Muhammad Ali. Players are criticizing Skull & Bones' dated graphics upon Ubisoft claims that the game is of quadruple A quality. Several comparison videos have been made between the game and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, showcasing its shortcomings such as facial animations. Ubisoft CEO Yves Gilmod was who defended the game's $70 price tag due to its long-term value, but so far it has been panned by critics. Techland has announced the Dying Light 2 Stay Human Reloaded Edition, set to launch on February 22nd alongside the Firearms update for PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. This new edition includes the base game, the Bloody Ties DLC, and all previous updates for the game, with the Firearms update introducing new guns and visual enhancements. Nightmare mode and tower raids have been delayed due to the Firearms update being the largest yet for the game. Nikon has announced their upcoming Connect showcase for this February 29, promising updates on 2024 games and surprises. Among those may be Gridfall 2 The Dying World, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, a new Terminator game, and more. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. Come back on Wednesday for a new video, but remember to share your thoughts on any of these news in the comments below, like or dislike to let me know your feedback, check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here, such as Spider-Man 2 making a comeback in Game Award wins, and consider subscribing for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hyper Games, and let's get hyped!